stupid. We are receiving audio. Cool. Oh, forgot they start you off with a fucking rocket launcher right off the bat. This is lagging like crazy. <laughs> Jesus. I love this particular part of the level. It's because there's plenty of cover all over the place. There's a lot of opportunities to flank as well. For both you and the enemies. Check my TV real quick. Okay, cool. That's fine. Too. Smack people with a giant rocket launcher versus shooting them. That that also works. Where are artillery stairs? Landing zone secure for the moment. I hear you. Starting our approach. Hang tight. Easy to set the trap. Inbound phantom. Sniper and rockets. So you almost prefer the older style of graphics purely because the Halo Ring is more of a distance thing versus the anniversary graphics where you can see them much more clearly. Limitations can sometimes be uh, advantageous. Such as how the original Silent Hill used the uh, its lack of draw distance to its advantage by using the fog. Shit. Oh, what a fucking shit talker. Although he's probably right. I'm surprised he knows about Cortana. He comes from Space Australia, apparently. Yeah, on one hand, the loading in between fights is used to uh, give you an opportunity to scrounge up supplies, but on the other hand, it's just like, you know what, I'm already set, I don't need an extra 20-30 seconds. And I know a lot of that comes from the uh, Bungie philosophy of, uh, what was the guy's name? Jamie something or another. He's, he's the guy who made the quote when the Halo 2, I think it was the Halo 2 or 3 documentary said the uh, 30 seconds of fun gameplay loop. So you need to come down from a bit, come down from the action a little bit, 
Otherwise, it becomes stale and monotonous. You don't want... You don't want the knob at 11 all the time. You need to bring it up to 9s, bring it up to 10s, but then slowly bring it back down. It's, uh... <laughs> for lack of better uh, comparison, you do not want to be a uh, two-pump chump. You need to space that thing out. That, that's a horrible example. I apologize for that. And if you're new to the stream, go ahead and leave a follow. That would be really cool. Thank you. Uh, is there someone else? Nope. Just gotta wait for the pelican to load in. I think I'm pretty good on supplies, though. This is maybe like. My only slight critique for plasma weapons is that for this sniper in particular, it says 44. That's not shots, that's how much of a uh, charge you have in the rifle. So this probably equates more to anywhere from 3 to 5 at shots. I got a good view coming in. There's a big building in the middle of this island's lake. I saw it too. It looked like a temple. If I were a megalomaniac, and I'm not, that's where I'd be. Focus. I mean, it, the SMGs are kind of uh, kind of pointless right now, given that we're in big, wide open areas, and the, the area we're going to right now is especially. Uh, Nice and open. Probably should have dropped with a battle rifle, dude. Should always just drop with a battle rifle by default. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna grab that dude's gun. Maybe this one even has more. Yep. Whoa. Whoa. Kicking ass and out of space. Wish you were here. This is. There's where we are eventually going at the end of the level. Looks a bit... I don't know. It, it looks much more stone-like on the older graphics. Versus here, it's... uh looks a bit more on the techie side. Let's see. Stone. Oh, no. I guess it's still stone here. It just has a different coloring to it. Let's see if we can run this turret over. Nope, we're already good. Just park these guys here. know about that terminal. I don't really want to mess with it. Good. The bridge is down. Now about those rates. Roger them. Armor's on the way. Oh. Where the frick did my car go? Not cargo as in freight. Cargo as in where did my vehicle go? I don't see any wreckage. So maybe they escaped. I see a dead guy. Any second now. I <laughs> like how the freaking model just disappears before the hatch is even really close. Oh, 
believe it was only one level in the original. No, there, I think it was two occasions where you got the tank in Halo 1. I want to say there's three or four separate instances in here. My marine's dead already. That is freaking bright. And I, oh, it's just a freaking unlit cable, only original. We'll be taking a slight break from uh, Halo tonight because Doom Eternal's coming out. So we're going to be shifting focus to that for the foreseeable future. Shit, 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 shit. I do not want to be killed by a fucking grunt. Shit. I am so screwed. Somehow this thing is still alive, and on fire, and should realistically be exploding any second now. Oh god, you can hear the freaking gears chugging away. It's one slight issue I've always kind of had with, um, you know, give me one second. If it's, uh, one issue I've always had with, uh, vehicles in regards to, uh, the multiplayer at least, but this mainly pertains to tanks versus, you know, ghosts or warthogs. 
I think that vehicle damage, permanent vehicle damage, should play a bigger part because you'll have someone in a tank ensure that uh, it's just completely dominating the landscape. You can't really do much about it. And yes, every time you do permanent damage to it, it gets less total health. But it still retains a pretty decent amount. I think it should just have a finite. like Because once, once your shields come back up, that also goes back to the, uh, to the vehicle as well. I think having just complete permanent uh, health on vehicles would be preferable, just for balance sake. certainly helped. That would have been infinitely harder if uh, we did not have it. I think Halo 3 probably does a better job of making you feel like a whole freaking legitimate army convoy versus, you know, a army of one. That shit. Uh, it's, oh, shit, shit, shit. <laughs> Sounded like fucking Arnold. Um, yeah, this is doing an effective job of like, you know what, we're in the military, but you're still one guy Pelican leading this down. whole freaking army conquest. Uh, Halo 3 has a convoy sequence of sorts in, um, on the arc level where it's just, you know, an entire freaking army. They dropped off goodies. Cool, fully decked out. Probably not the best idea to stand in front of a tank, buddy. Can't really bring the tang much farther, but I like to see what I can do anyway. Ah, uh, nope. That's the threshold. towards me. Shit. Oh, well, they're running anyway. The commanders are dead. And you will be too. In the context of the, uh, shit. In the context of the books, even the grunts are supposed to be enough of a challenge for the, uh, for your regular marine. So the fact that you can kill them with one punch actually says a lot about, uh, about the Spartans. Granted, when you're playing as an ODST, you can still kill grunts with ease, but you're definitely not one punch in them. supplies since we're close enough anyway. No ammo. 
tanks just chilling here. Oh, you, you. Yeah, I was, I was, I was kind of already doing that. You, you guys are more than welcome to, you know, contribute. Pat, let's let's pass the hat around of uh, duties that need to be done. Feel free to contribute anytime, guys. Watch out, what do you have? Let's Let's take it back. Where the fuck did the tank go? Did it fall? Yep. <laughs> oh, that's dumb. Let's see, all enemies wiped out. It's a little hologram of their prophet. You can blow these up and I believe Halo 3. A little bit of lore building there if people actually take the time to sit there. More like mass suicide. Don't feel like wasting my rockets or sniper on these guys, so grenades it is for the time being. I would say Halo 2 definitely has the most personality and writing over all of them except for maybe ODST. And a lot of that comes from the uh, from the Chief and Cortana interactions. Of course, there's a lot of Johnson in this game. There's a lot of Miranda in this game. There's, e there's the Arbiter and the uh, freaking Splitjaw guy. But, um... Due to events that happen later in this game, you don't get that much time with Cortana in uh, Halo 3. Let's see. There you go. Someone behind here. Fuck. Shit. Oh, I am not equipped to fight drones. Not in the slightest. So this is gonna be a bit more challenging than I would like. Big fan of the music. Oh, oh ho, 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 no scoped. Not really as much of a cool accomplishment if you're playing on PC. Just saying. It's oh, battle rifle. See, I can snap another. You know what? Let's take these guys out the battle rifle. Fuck it. Been hoarding it for a while now, anyway. Ah, shit, 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 shit. Not good. That guy somewhere. See if I can flush him out. There we go. Got anything else you want to say? Mm, not particularly. Just go full sniper. If 
I can see why they don't want you having being able to carry two of the same weapon, at least in multiplayer, sure. for uh, balancing no reasons. Like, I don't see why you can't carry, like, two beam rifles in the campaign. No, we made landfall, but they don't seem to consider us a very serious threat. Boy, are they in for a big surprise. Oh. Forgot about you. Watch yourself. Honor guard. Looks like they didn't guard themselves from my fucking bullets. See, so if you pace out your uh, plasma weapons efficiently, you basically never really have to reload. And that's really easy to pace them out with a sniper versus, you know, a plasma rifle or something like that. Cats are currently roaming around the room, looking for stuff to fuck with, as cats do. Wait, go back. That's what I thought you said. The prophet of regret is planning to activate Halo. Are you sure? I delight this holy ring. Release its cleansing flame and burn a path into the divine beyond. Pretty much. Commander, we've got a problem. So I hear. But from what I understand, the Prophet will need an object, the Index, to activate the ring. I've located a library similar to the one you found on the first Halo. If the rings work the same way, the Index should be inside. I'll bet the Covenant are thinking the exact same thing. Then we better beat them to it, Sergeant. Extract your men and meet me at the library. Yes, ma'am. I'll secure the index, Chief. You take out the Prophet. He's given us all the intel we need. Delivery for a uh, new voice actor is a little bit flat. I don't believe it's the old uh, VO tracks. I love the shit talking the Marines do in here in particular. Two, two and three are definitely the highlights. And uh, Reach, they take themselves a bit more seriously. Don't mind if I do. Going full sniper. Oh, shit, shit. Oh, whoa, what the fuck? Got sniped from somewhere. Sniper at where? Oh, shit! More. Everybody, get over here! Shit! Not a great hiding place for you, dude. Tearing shit up. Are people gonna come out of here? Nope. Other way around. <laughs> he just freaking dropped his rifle. He said, fuck that, I'm not walking in there. New rifle. Fresh one, at least. I'm doing all, yeah, I'm kind of doing all the work for you, man. In a weird way, it feels better to play this game on easy because it makes you feel like a badass one because you're just 
ripping through enemies left and right. Or you can play on Legendary and see how actually strong of an adversary these guys are. And it kind of works both ways, because, you know, aside from all the dying and whatnot, the fact that you're able to beat campaign uh, just highlights what a uh, badass the chief is. to wait for something to happen here. Shit. That is my old rifle, I think. I don't believe that's a new one. Cortana, nope, it is a new one. I don't want to give away my position, so I'm rerouting a few stragglers back to you. I apologize. These pelicans are all the support you're gonna get. Understood, ma'am. Are those moving? Yes, they are. Well, I guess you could see what those kind of are in the original. Just more detail on them here. Whoa, 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 whoa. A gondola's launching from the far tower. Big surprise. It's full of covenant reinforcements. I think I wiped most of them out already. Let's see, where's that extra sniper ammo I was promised? Okay, nope, guess that's it. Pretty convenient on our part. Yeah, it might help if I press the button. Let's see. Oh, what the fuck? Drones. I think you can just make out the tip of those grunts. Are you all right? Just fine, soldier. Do you think that a freaking angle? Formed by volcanic action, which means it was either built this way on purpose or was created by some other cataclysmic event. I'm sorry. Were you trying to kill something? Yes. Shit. Got to uh, antsy there. That was quick. Here we go. Shit. I can get. How many frickin' snipers are there going to be? Running real low on supplies. 
thought I killed you. There we go. Four bullets, four grenades. Norm. These grenades as much as possible in here. Why did everyone stop shooting? Because there's no, oh, I was about to say, because there's no enemies left. I'm just a little coward. <laughs> oh, I love the shit talking in here. Shit, 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 shit. No way, that's shit. There's a submerged section that connects these towers to the outlying structure. Looks like we're going down. Unless you'd prefer to swim. That's what she said. Full car coming up! Oops. Nothing a grenade can't solve. No, other side. God damn it, you walk all the way around. At least I managed to have a uh, submarine survive. This guy, this guy actually wants to get in. Nope, he is more than content to just <laughs> run into a wall. God, the human AI is so fucking bad in here. More of a regular buzz cut right there. And a flat top. <sighs> Fuck. Hey, you need me? I've intercepted a secure transmission from Regret's carrier to something called High Charity. It seems to be a formal apology to the prophets of truth and mercy. Apparently. Regret jumped the gun when he attacked Earth. He's asking the other prophets to forgive his premature arrival, arguing that no human presence was foretold. That explains why Once again, different artistic take is that, uh, you know, limited by the technology of the time. Uh, you can't really see much in the older graphics, but it also adds a bit of a mystery to, like, oh, what is this shit we're going past? But in newer graphics, you can see everything pretty clearly, which is cool in its own right. Got a mole. You know what? Give me one minute. I will be right back.
All right, we are back. Let me make sure my mic is... Yep, mic is working. Cool. Back to it. Oh. Oh, thank you for the follow. That is awesome. It's nice to see my uh, hours of work managing to pay off somehow. There we go. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to leave them in the chat. I'm more than happy to talk. Is that it? Uh, shoot. Grab something. Uh, sorry. You you guys are basically doomed. Alright, if I remember correctly, this part's gonna suck a fair amount. Yeah, shit. Oh, yep, 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 this part's going to suck. Sorry, Marina was a very, uh, selfish sacrifice on your part that you did not consent to. Yeah, I, I miss Halo 3 a lot. Those are the, um, I have a lot of built up nostalgia for Halo 1 and 2 because I didn't have an original Xbox, so I'd spend a lot of time at my cousin's place on weekends, so we would just constantly play through the two campaigns over and over and over. Um, but Halo 3 was my first 360 game. That was the first Xbox console I had, and so I, I know that game basically like the back of my hand. Got a lot of built-up nostalgia for the... Um... Oh, shit, 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 shit. Not good. Oh. oh. Okay. Made it longer than I thought I would. Yeah, I have a lot of nostalgia for the Halo 3 campaign, and I really, really do not want to know how many freaking hours I've accumulated in the uh, in the multiplayer. I, I would probably feel bad. Did you uh, play it at launch also? Oh, wait. Freaking drones. Uh, shit. Yeah, I was, I was admittedly a bit late to Halo 3. I got it in the summer the year after it came out. But it was still good times of plenty. What the fuck? I don't even remember being checkpointed over here. <laughs> okay, that gets rid of that pretty easy. I just gotta deal with God, nope, 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 nope. Uh, no, you were four, but I love playing with my older brother. That, that is so freaking weird to me, and this is really dating my freaking age um what halo 3 came out 2007 i was born in 94 so i was 13 years old I, w I was going into high school when it came out so i guess i was maybe just like at that age where i was enough still enough a little angsty teenage brat but uh i had a lot of good times and it, it's so weird to me to think that uh and you know this is, of course this is normal but uh, people much younger grew up on Halo. And so people didn't necessarily grow up on Halos 1 and 2 or fuck, even you can go back to like even just what's what's considered retro now, which is uh, NES, Super NES. I mean, it's still weird to me to consider... Fuck, people even consider like the GameCube era, the sixth generation of consoles to be retro now. And I'm just like, what are you talking about? That, that was yesterday. <laughs> then again, I've... I think that's something that uh, cinephiles from 
Cinema really got started. They're still experimenting early 1900s. You can say like the golden age of cinema was like the 70s with The Godfather and whatnot. Should uh crap 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 crap. So I didn't grow up in the golden age of cinema, and I kind of you have to do a bit of a historian's look through it, just like what are the greatest pieces of film they have to go back and what what are, what are essential viewings basically. I really need grenades. Shit. And I feel it's just like that a little bit with games. I'm not going to be like, oh, every person has to go out and have a physical NES and play Mario. But I think it's just interesting. Well, it's it's easy now because with the internet, you, you can have easy access. You don't even have to play it yourself. You can look up Wikipedia's. You can look up Let's Plays or even uh, Twitch. Ah, this is a bad idea. Shit, 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 shit. I need to back off. Let's see. Even when you were a younger person, I was younger, I still played Change Mutant Turtle. T um, is that TMMT Change Mutant Turtles? The um, Turtles in Time, I believe. I might be wrong on that. And the GameCube and N64 Mario. Uh, you are you are really bringing me back right now. I the so when I was growing up, my older brother is the one who technically owned the uh, Super Nintendo and the uh, NES. Oh, thank you. Uh, I, I wasn't sure. I thought, like, it Twisted Metal? I'm like, no, that's TM. I'm getting the T from somewhere. Uh, okay, I, I need guns in order to beat this. But, uh, so my brother is the one that owned the N64. And, not, I'm sorry, N64. The NES and Super Nintendo. Come on. This is not going well. And so I, I vividly remember playing uh, Super Mario Bros., uh, Super Mario World in particular, and we never really had that many games because games were stupid expensive back then. They would go up to as high as $90 and... When you account for uh, 90s inflation, that actually gets a lot closer to $120. <laughs> and those were really short games, too. Um, so, the only real games we had on the uh, NES and NES were Super Mario Brothers 1 and 3. We had Super Mario World. <laughs> we had Pac-Man 2. And so... I feel like my nostalgia for those games and the fact that I know them so well, so well, kind of stems from the fact that uh, these guys do not want to fucking die. It kind of stems from the fact that we weren't made of money and we just had to kind of had to replay what we owned over and over and over again. Did he shoot the other hunter? <laughs> I don't believe I killed him. Thankfully, the hunters are much more incompetent in here compared to uh, Halo Reach. They're really bad in Halo 3, in particular. And people say I've got a big head. Uh. But uh, the N64 was a con was technically my console. That was a bit of a gift for me. So I played a whole lot of Mar uh, Super Mario 64 whole lot of Mario Karts, and Jesus, I had so many freaking N64 Karts, and, and honestly, I have sold a lot of them over time, just because it is a, still a slight pain to set up the the, uh, the N64, but you can play most of those on emulators, and unlike the PS1 emulators, you don't need to get a... Um, Fuck, I forgot the word. I haven't used an emulator in quite some time. Uh, you don't need a copy of the what is essentially the operating system because you can download the ROMs for PS1 games relatively easy. The hard part is uh, finding the... I'm using the wrong terminology, but what's basically the operating system to actually run the game. 
Um, that's a bit harder to find. People don't really list those on the internet. That's why you have to get more from like uh, torrent sites like Pirate Bay. Uh, damn it. Uh, speaking of Pac-Man, I still have a joystick plug-in game called Super Pac-Man. You know, I actually saw... I've been seeing a lot of those more recently. You know, if you just go to like a Target or whatever, they have a tiny little... It's, it's even shaped like a tiny little uh, arcade that you can use. But, um, man, I, I would really love to just own some, like, legit uh, arcade machines. I know GameStop's been doing a, uh, a limited run on certain games. Like, my, my uh, brother actually owns a... And I think they have a couple different games on them. I'm not doing too well right here. Uh, getting cover. He has a Rampage machine, a Street Fighter, uh... The first Teenage Mutant Turtles game, not Turtles in Time. Damn it. But uh, it's cool. I mean, they're on the smaller side, so there's just that small little tinge of, oh, this isn't as cool as it could be. But uh, those are actually really expensive. I'd also just like to own a pinball machine, too. I remember when I was younger, um, <coughs> shoot, let's just go dual wield, see if this helps. Uh, when I was younger, the babysitter that my uh, parents would have me stay at, they actually had their own pinball machine, but it isn't one of those ones where if you lose, you just hit a button and you continue. It actually, you still had to put quarters in it, but obviously they had the key to unlock the, uh, the the, uh, the slot for that, so you, you can get your quarters back, but they just had a giant... Oh, shit, shoot, 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 shoot. Damn. Thought I had that. Um, yeah, it was, it was fun, because you just had a giant glass of uh, quarters you can reach into. I kind of prefer that over just hitting, just resume. Uh, mine's a plug... Yours is a plug-in to TV from 90... Oh, wow. God, that really freaking brings me back. I think my brother might have even had an Atari Jaguar. We, we, we never had any of the cables growing up because I think it's just something my mom tossed out. She never bothered to get a replacement for it. But, um... God, I, I have a lot of nostalgia for retro stuff. Even if I didn't necessarily grow up during, like, the Atari era or anything like that. I was definitely a... Super Nintendo slash um, N64 kid. Shoot. Uh, I've been stuck on this sec on this section for far too long. Let's see if we can just chill here. He doesn't seem. To God, the <laughs> suit. Fuck. I really just need a better gun. Maybe there's a carbine around here somewhere. Couldn't hurt to look around, I guess. Because this is going poorly. I know, this is where I came from. Uh, yours is a Namco. Oh, awesome. I know, uh, you know, give me one second, my cat's being annoying, wants to be let in. Um, my experience with Namco is actually a little bit limited. I've always, they've always kind of put out these Namco collections for, um, I had one on PS2. There's basically every Namco game just all on one disc, which was pretty nice. And I, I might be wrong, but I believe they still kind of do those collections for modern systems. Alright, I'm, I've been stuck on this way too long. I need to get shit done. And them being invisible does not help. Actually, you know what? I'm going to switch to older <laughs> graphics because it is way easier to see them. So, you can consider this cheating if you want, but it is damn useful either way. Shoot. 
Thankfully, he's not smart enough to carry a backup rifle or pistol or anything. He's just kind of stuck getting stunned. There we go. That only took a million years. I apologize for that. There we go. Uh, yeah, I have a. I really like the OG graphics, and um, I believe this is before that you were uh, watching. I was going a little bit into some of the artistic differences between OG and new, because I think for the Halo One anniversary, when they took some liberties in the art direction, so there's a lot more yellows and things look significantly different from the original artistic design. Halo 2 is much more in line with uh, with the original intention. But if we switch to the issues, if we switch to the older graphics, you can see that um, you know everything's a bit more foggy. You can't really see the structures all that well. It's a bit more mysterious because of that, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that. This was on the original Xbox. It didn't have as much power to show all this. This is obviously hiding a big uh, loading screen for the next area. But when you go into the newer graphics, you can actually see a lot of the buildings. And that's because, you know, it's newer hardware. It can, it can handle that a lot easier. So whether showing all that was the intentional, the original design that the developers wanted to go for, I'm, I don't know. I'd have to... Ask developers or look at old interviews, but um, it's it's two very distinct takes. Like if you look at the uh, original Silent Hill on PS One, the original reason why they had to put the fog in there is because they couldn't load the entire map. There was there was basically no draw distance in there, but that fog actually turned into one of the biggest. Uh, draws and appeals of it. it it added to the atmosphere that you couldn't see where you're going Shit. Uh, I'm going back nope didn't make it so a lot of times um, a lack of technology can actually uh, drive innovation shit nope go on shit 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 Yeah, OG graphics are nice. It's cool that they kept the original sound design too for when you swap over. The uh, the only time it's not seamless transitioning between the two is in the middle of the cutscenes because um, they're not exactly in time with one another. They're pretty damn close. But, like you can say, like new cutscene is two minutes and ten seconds where the original cutscene is like one minute fifty seconds so it's not one to one and because of that they can't really swap the audio I'm sure there might have been other solutions they could have done but what they went with is basically whatever version of the graphics you start off in that's the one you're locked in for the duration of the cutscene I, you know I might even be wrong on that it might exclusively use the um, the anniversary audio. Because I've, if I'm being honest, I've played most of this in the uh, newer graphics. I, I would say across the board, they did a much better job with uh, this anniversary version on. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, they did a better anniversary ver uh, version with Halo 2 than Halo 1. Am I on Xbox or PC? I am on Xbox. Halo 2 is currently not available on the Master Chief Collection. They added Halo 1 to the PC version, I want to say, two, two and a half weeks ago, maybe three weeks? Somewhere around there. And you know what? It runs really well on there. I have a 1440 monitor on PC, 144 uh, hertz, so that's 144 FPS, and it Looks really nice on there. Um, when Reach first came out on uh, PC, I, I did play it with a mouse. I'm like, you know what? Halo feels pretty good with a mouse, especially sniping. 
even if it kind of throws the balance off in multiplayer, because now you have people no scoping left and right because it's easy to with the mouse. Um, let me swap this out. But um, honestly, I think Halo is essentially alongside, I'd argue, Call of Duty, Titanfall, stuff like that. It's a, it's basically the cream of the crop in terms of shooters and controllers. I'm sorry, shooters based around controllers. Like the aim assist is just perfect. It's not cheap. There's no lock on like Grand Theft Auto or Red Dead. It's still very skill based. Um, so even when I was playing Halo One on PC, I was I still preferred to. Um, you know what? I'm going to do some cheesing right here. So, when I was playing Halo 1 on PC, I was just like, you know what, I'm just going to keep using controller. So the game was designed around, it's comfortable. And it already feels fine. There's no real necessity for that much accuracy in a Halo game. There, another do you like typically play on Xbox, Xbox or PC, or what consoles slash PC, handheld, whatever? What What is your preference slash what do you currently play on as for me i own basically everything where did i put my rockets save that for now i don't think they'll be very useful when i'm on a moving uh platform xbox all the way yeah xbox is a great platform especially nowadays with the x series x um news as, as well as the uh, PS5 news had just come out <coughs> confirming that they're both pretty powerful uh, in terms of raw power the Series X is uh, is slated to be much more powerful than PS PS5 although a lot of uh, journalists I follow are confirming like yes while the uh, Xbox One Xbox I'm sorry Xbox Series X the names get a little confusing after a little bit <coughs> uh, um, sorry, let me take a drink of water. Throat's getting a little dry. There we go, that's a bit better. Uh, there's a new Xbox coming out called Scarlet. I believe that was the code name for the Xbox One X. I believe so. I, I might have to look that up, but I, I believe that's for the Xbox One X. That came out 2017? Yeah, so essentially Xbox Series X is, is going to be more powerful than the PS5, but there's something very proprietary about the way the PS5 is slated to use um, its SSD technology that actually might be more important but we will have to wait and see what happens. But either way, the Series X is looking to be a freaking beast of a machine uh, with the graphic power, basically equivalent of a RTX 2080, which is beyond insane. That's already a $500 card by itself, if not higher. I'd have to look up how they've been fluctuating, especially with the whole Bitcoin mining craze. So I think it's absolutely going to be a bang for the buck. Should, should probably be using my rockets for that, but yeah, you know what? I need shit, 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 shit. Freaking jetpacks. But uh, I think even currently, um, most people when, when people ask me what console they should get, I tell them if you don't care about some of the PS4 exclusives, whatever. I think the Xbox is the all-around better console. I think it runs better. Uh, I've always had a better time with uh, online connection with it. And especially with Game Pass nowadays, when, when any of my cousins ask me, or any family members ask me, like, hey, I, I want to get a console for my kid, or I want to get a can console for my boyfriend, girlfriend, et cetera, et cetera, whatever, I say, Get, get an Xbox. Even if you're not getting the X, the S is just fine as is. And with Game Pass, they can play some, basically as many games as they want for a really low sum of money. Let's see. There 
go. Kill this guy. But uh, I I would say pretty universally, I I play on everything. I've definitely been on. I bought everything at launch. But um, t -t -t sorry, losing my train of thought a little bit. Head got a little itchy. Let's see. T -t -t uh, but yeah, I I bought everything at launch, and I've been playing the Xbox m for the overwhelming majority of last year slash this year. I still play on PC a bit. Um, the the game I'm actually going to be streaming tonight is uh, Doom Eternal. I already have that preloaded on my PC. I'm probably going to try to go through that. Then I'll come back to Halo 2 and finish my <laughs> marathon with the rest of the Halos because that's what I've been craving lately. But my PS4 has basically been collecting a bit of dust. The uh, resume function is a bit better on there, so if I have like five minutes, I'll keep a game in the background and I'll go back to that. The largest anyone's ever seen. Get inside the temple and kill regret before it can stop us. And uh, that's one thing that the next Xbox is actually aiming to not only fix but make infinitely better on the Series X is that you can suspend multiple games. So let's say I'm playing. Halo 2 campaign, and my friend says, hey, I want to play Overwatch or Rainbow Six. I don't have to, you don't, you won't have to quit out of Halo 2. You can just keep down resume and jump into, uh, I think they, they said it's at least like three other games. I'd have to look up the specifics, but that is a, that's a game changer. That's something not even PC can do. Uh, you have the S and it's pretty great. Yeah, the S is a great console. It has a. <laughs> it already has advantages over the PS4 Pro, which is the uh, 4K Blu ray drive. I'm not sure if most people care about that since we live in the age of streaming content. But I do have a lot of 4K Blu rays, and it's, it's nice. That's why my Xbox is my primary. You know, even if I'm using something that's just like a DVD or a regular Blu-ray, that I just default to Xbox because that's what I'm familiar with, because it's it has the crown for this is where you go to do that. I mean, especially with the S nowadays. I know they have sales for the Xbox One X. Um, I forgot. I'm pretty damn sure it's a limited time deal, but they have them for like three hundred dollars for the X. Then that, that's insane. But the S is such a great entry point. You can play every single game, and and Game Pass like that. That's what I recommend to people nowadays, especially with the Series X right around the corner. Even if someone says, "Oh, should I get the X or should I uh, should I get the X now and then get the uh, Series X when it comes out next?" It's not even next year. It's this year now. I tell them like, "No, just just get an S. It's nice and cheap right now. And then you just get the Series X later on." Save yourself the money. It's the same games. And honestly, if you're not even playing on a... Um, if you're not playing on a 4K TV, or if you don't have HDR, uh, which the S is still capable of, the S can still do HDR, I recommend, you know what? If you don't have 4K TV, just stick with, just stick with the S. I know a lot of people usually try to uh, shoot the uh, profit, but uh, it's a lot easier just punch him. He can't defend himself, even if he just keeps getting more uh, covenant in here. Do you do you have a 4K TV, or are you playing on a uh, 720 or 1080? Oh shoot! 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 There we go. I'm actually surprised nowadays how cheap um, 4K TVs are. It, I want to say like even four, three years ago, you'd still be paying like an arm and a leg for them like $1,000. Um, 
But yeah, they're, they're crazy cheap now. It's not even like Black Friday. Oh, oh, geez. It's way too many sword guys. For comfort. Oh. Damn it. Uh, 720. Oh, that's still decent. And honestly, this gen has been a very wonky with that. When, um, even last generation, it was touted as doing HD, but in actuality, a lot of the games were running in sub-720 uh, resolutions, and they were being upscaled. So you'd be actually running games in what are basically barely above 480, but in a 16 by 9 uh, ratio being upscaled to 720. So instead of 720, you'd be like 568, somewhere around there. Um, so when this current generation came out, PS4 comes out swinging and saying, you know what, we're all about 1080 gaming, and that's nice and everything, but uh, <laughs> they did that at the cost of uh, frame rate stability. So when a lot of tests were coming out for games such as uh, Call of Duty Ghosts, I think, for example, it was it was running 1080 on PS4, and uh, I think it was 900p upscaled to 1080 on Xbox. But the Xbox had the better frame rate. So, and, and for me, I've always chosen frame rate over resolution. That's I just care about performance more than how pretty it is. Um, so, in some regards, the Xbox is better on that front. And so, if you're playing on a 720 monitor now, you s might actually be getting better performance because it's not trying to push out uh, 1080 resolution. Um, you're playing on 720, but your 14 don't feel like saving up for a huge TV. Yeah, that's absolutely more than fair. Not many 14-year-olds I know have jobs. I mean, hell, most people, um, for reference, I'm... 25. Most people that even have 720 TVs or 1080s, even with 4K TVs being uh, much cheaper than they've ever been, it's just like I, my TV's working. I don't see the need to upgrade, and that's absolutely fine. All right, let's kill these grunts. I would say people that are using standard definition televisions, which would be, you know, like the big tube looking ones with a uh, square 4x3 res um, s screen ratio, they, they probably need to upgrade to what's current. But 720 is still manageable. And honestly, even when you hear about um, PC people swinging their. Uh, Swinging their big uh, PC rigs around saying, like, oh, we're playing at 4K, 160, 165 hertz monitors for 165 uh, FPS, 244 FPS. That's for a very, very small population of, uh, where the fuck is this sword guy? I don't want him to, oh, not a sword guy. So, like, a lot of people swing around like, oh, yeah, consoles are weak. We're, we're PC, 4K, 100, 244 frames per second. If you actually look at the statistics for uh, Steam, most people are not playing at that. It's like maybe one or two percent, and obviously this is this is not verbatim information. I would have to look this up, but compared to the clout you see people tossing around on uh, on Reddit, RPC gaming, um, that, that that's not the actuality of the situation. Most people are, like, optimally, most people are still playing on 1080 monitors. If not, shoot, I know a lot of people are still using 720 monitors. And especially the thing with PC gaming is, uh, if you're willing to make the sacrifice in resolution, that pays dividends because you can have higher settings, such as shadows, textures, or even just keep those lower as well and get a higher frame rate. A lot of people have not upgraded their graphics cards over the last seven years or so. So staying on an older um, resolution actually helps out a lot. Yeah, no, no shame in a lower resolution monitor. 
it's still the same exact game you're playing. And especially for younger people, I, I, I feel like it's not going to, like, blow your mind. Um, it won't blow your mind going to 4K TV. It's like, oh, it's a completely new game. No, it's, it's, it's the same game. But I, I tell a lot of people this. I'm just like, why would you pay that much money for something that's only going to make a marginal difference? When you can, like, let, let's say you buy, like, a $1,000 TV for whatever reason, like a top-of-the-line Sony TV. Instead of doing that, you could buy, what, what, what's uh 1,000 divided by 60? That would be um, 15, 16. So you could buy 16 new, buy 16 brand new games and still have some money left over. So I think it's about prioritizing. Would you rather have more games or would you have a better TV? I've ever noticed that PC players make fun of Xbox players, but most PCs run on Microsoft. I I really am not a fan of how the big old internet meme or hate machine of PC players towards consoles in general. <coughs> how the uh, it, it's, it's just mean spirited. They say like, "Oh, how can you play with a peasant controller? How can you enjoy a console?" I'm just like. And I come from the perspective that I started playing on consoles, so obviously I have a soft spot for them, and I always will. I bought my, what is was basically my first gaming PC in, when was it? 20, 2013, 2014, somewhere around there. So, so I am a PC player. I have a really nice rig. I have a i7-8700K. I have a RTX 2070, so it's 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 pretty top of the line. It's not mid tier. It's 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 uh, more on the higher end. But like so much of it is just like dick waving. Like I spent more money on this thing for marginal returns. And like so many of these people don't even have the nicest machines. So many of these people are running on like super low res monitors. They have really crappy graphics cards. And and it's fair to say like objectively like yes, a very high end PC is objectively runs and uh, makes games look better. That that's been of an objective thing. I personally don't like playing most games with a mouse and keyboard. Uh, such as such as such as Halo, it throws the balance off of uh, off of sniper rifles in particular. Then you can have people running around no scoping with no problem in the world, and, and that's not how that gun is balanced in these games. I think it's best to just ignore those people. Consoles are infinitely more comfortable. I'd recommend consoles to anybody any day of the week over a PC. They're way cheaper. You get great looking games as is. And, uh, like, shoot, even for, like, the Xbox One X, you're, you're spending, even when it came out, it was $500. To get the equivalent of that on a freaking uh, PC, you'd be spending an extra, shit, maybe, like, an X. You'd be spending like a thousand dollars. Consoles are the better deal. That that's without a doubt. And uh, to confess, I have spent more than my fair share of money of upgrades on PC, and it can be very addicting in that regard. Let's open this. I don't know. Co consoles are infinitely more comfortable to use. I will always recommend them over PCs. There's so much shit that can go wrong on a PC. Like, your drivers won't work. Your freaking audio isn't working. Steam won't recognize your drives. It's... There's so much that can go wrong on there. It gets really annoying. But, uh... To go back to your initial question, because I... I, um... I, I went off on more of the first part than the second. You ever notice that PC players make fun of Xbox players, even though most PCs 
uh, run on Microsoft. Um, why is this not opening? Do I have to kill these guys? I mean, I mean, it, it has a bit of like irony to it in the fact that they're bashing Microsoft. But I think most of it just comes from. Most of it comes down to the to the hardware. So I could say, what would be a good example of this? Oh, do I have to hit all of them? Probably. Uh, let's see. Would Apple be a good equivalent? So while yes, it is running on. It's running on Windows by Microsoft. They, they're not so much bashing the company as much as the hardware. I I, I, w I would not necessarily equivoc equivocate the two. But if they are outward bashing, saying like, "Oh, Microsoft idiots," they could say like their decision for the Xbox is idiotic. That that would make more sense, even if I obviously don't agree with that. But yeah, pe people on the internet are jerks. People should just stick to what they like. It's it's all pieces of plastic. And uh, honestly, we're moving into an environment in a world where crossplay is becoming such a thing that it doesn't really matter what console you get, aside from how do you how do you like the interface? How do you like uh, the services that that specific platform provides? For example, uh, Fortnite is now crossplay. You can play it with anybody on any platform. Um, I feel like something else just went announced for that. I know Rocket League's been doing that. Uh, Modern Warfare is a, is a big one. That is a big move by a big publisher, and I'm surprised that they freaking did that. That you can play with anyone on there. And especially the fact that they just put out freaking uh, Warzone, the uh, Battle Royale mode, for free. You don't even need the base game for it. So, uh, hardware to specific companies is becoming less important. It's just more about what price points are consumers comfortable with. Why is he's not opening? I could have sworn you can just go up to him and hit X and it'll go. Maybe they're loading. Shoot. Are your current plans to uh, to move over to the Series X once it's uh, I, I assume once it's more economically viable. And even then, I understand why people feel like they want to, and I, I absolutely suffer from this problem, that people want to get them at launch so that they can be part of the, uh, be part of the culture. They want to feel in included. I know I feel that way about games a lot. It's like, oh, if I don't get this game when it launches, I'm going to miss out on all the Twitter conversations. I'm going to miss out on all the podcasts. But, um... I, especially with hardware for uh, consoles, I suggest people usually just wait a year or so. You'll get it for cheaper. It might even be a newer, slimmer model. Uh, Nintendo and uh, Sony have proven to do this time and time again, and so is Microsoft. Uh, because watch <laughs> models are usually pretty faulty, as notable by the 360, as, no as notable by the PS3. Uh, probably. Yeah, that, I think, um, I think I will most likely be getting, there we go. Yeah, I, I will more than likely be getting the Series X before I get the PS5. And that's just because I like what Microsoft is doing on a services level with Game Pass, their attitude towards consumers. I think it's infinitely more forward-thinking than uh, Sony at the moment. And um, most people I know that own... Shit. Most people I know that own um, both consoles, they basically use their PS4 as an exclusives machine. And admittedly, at the start of the generation, I was definitely more of the PS4... Um, and I was more in the PS4 crowd. I'd play everything on there. I'd use the Xbox for exclusives. 
but that has drastically flipped over the years. PS4 interface is really freaking slow and buggy. The store is not built for that hardware. It's just a real big chore to maneuver around it. You know, on the Xbox, well, they have really flipped. The, I did not care for the Xbox One store when it first came out, but it is so much better now. So, Series X, I am more than, more than likely not... Nah, I messed up the sense. I am more than likely going to get that at launch. Granted, um, since you're 14, I'm assuming you're in school. And um, I don't know if this is nationwide. I know for California, Washington, and uh, other states, uh, schools are canceled. And I am assuming it's the same for you. It, is it the same for you? Are you quarantined at home because of the uh, whole coronavirus situation going on? But um, there's some good videos that I would recommend if you follow Alana Pierce at all. She, she has a pretty concise video on her YouTube channel. Um, shoot, let me get this. Uh, showing that the effects of the coronavirus are actually going to have a huge impact on, on, uh, on the gaming industry. <coughs> Uh, whether it's from developers being forced to work at home and being less productive to um, and this is going to impact the uh, launch of the next gen consoles really really badly is that these consoles are manufactured in China so production is going to come is going to come to an absolute halt like they're supposed to be working on this stuff Bas what is basically right now in time for the holiday season and that's just that's just more than likely not going to happen, depending on how long this thing lasts. Uh, yeah, I'm in school, but it's canceled till September 15th. Wow. Are you part of, um, are they having you be part of, uh, online courses? Or are they having you rely on, uh, homeschooling? Uh, from my experience, at least in college, I always preferred online courses because, uh, for reference, I live in the San Francisco Bay Area. I went to school at San Francisco State University, but from where I live, because I, I did not dorm on campus. Uh, nope. Okay. So, I, I did not live on campus. I would have to drive to school every day, and for me, that was a hour... It's supposed to be an hour commute. But granted, traffic times being what they are in the Bay Area, it was basically more... Oh, you got no arms and you can't attack. Shit. Let's see if we get this. It would basically turn into a two-hour drive for me. So whenever the opportunity arise for me to have an online class, I would take it because one, it's saving me time, two, it's saving me gas. And honestly, most uh, lecture classes where you're sitting in a hall learning, um, it, it can just be done online. They, they just give you a PowerPoint, they give you materials to read, and it's, it's easy. There's, I would say most classes do not need to be in class. I think it is, it can be a big waste. I'm trying not to get killed by these guys. Oh, what the fuck? Uh, damn it. Uh, nope, just homework. I imagine that's pretty boring. As for me, um... I'm going to actually have to stop the stream in a little bit because I work in uh, news media. So I've been working from home. And I'm just doing this in my spare time. But going back to the uh, games industry being impacted, I would not be surprised if the consoles get delayed to next year, even if it's sometime in spring. And I know... Sony and Microsoft really love releasing their stuff in, uh, in time for the holidays in November because that's just the way it's always been. That's when people are ready to spend their money. But um, Nintendo, Apple, and fuck, so many tech companies, they've proven you don't have to release things in, during the holiday season. It might even be better off to do it in March or February like Nintendo did with the Switch because you get your, er your early adopters are going to buy it no matter what. There, there's no doubt about that. And, um, 
Nintendo did suffer from not having enough uh, Switches available um, at launch. So it was really stagnant. I didn't get my Switch until like six months after the thing came out. So releasing in March can actually really help alleviate that because your launch people are going to buy it no matter what. And uh, by the time that the holidays run around, you would have upped production so more people can get it. So I, I would not be surprised if the consoles, console launches get worse. Uh, shoot, there's way too many guys here. Uh, Sweden has the highest success rate, but the lowest school time. Uh, yeah, there's something to be said for that. I don't think... Um, I'm assuming you're either in 8th grade or going into ninth if you're 14. Somewhere within that range. But there is no reason for school to be... So for when I, when I went to school, I believe it was 9 o'clock to 3. And so if you take into account lunch, that is a... How long is that? Basically, uh, six, six hours of school. I, I don't think you need that every single day of the week. You do not need 30 hours of school a week. Because all it does, you're going into 10th. Oh, wow. Because uh, to me, the best thing about college was each class on average, unless it's like a five unit course, which means it's an important class like math, those can sometimes go on as long as... Um, is four hours, four or five hours by themselves, which is actually freaking horrifying. Uh, avoid those if you can. Um, yeah, especially with teenagers. Like, I, I, I know what it's like. I don't want to... It is so boring having to pay attention to stuff for six hours straight. I mean, you do have, like... I had a 30-minute lunch period. But they... They need more entertaining classes, or at least entertaining teachers, to convey the information in an efficient manner. But like, after six hours, your brain just shuts off. In, in college, they would, um... I didn't have classes every day. I'd have, like, maybe, like, two on a Monday, one on a Wednesday, and then another, like, on a Friday morning. And that just helps so much more with at least my retention. Because I only have to focus for a certain amount of time, and I have time to let that sit and digest, but in the K-12 system, it's just like class after class after class, retain this information, you have homework for like six, seven different classes, it's like, oh my god, it is, it's, it's basically a full-time job, and um, I don't know, it's just so much more manageable in, uh, in college for me, and I was working what was essentially a full-time job. Uh, damn. Um, yeah, I was working a full-time, what was essentially a full-time job, a, man a management position in uh, when I was attending college. And I still had an easier time with that versus high school. And I think that actually says a lot about how things are structured. Uh, what's your news or radio station? I'll give it a listen. Um, I work at a... Um, I work at Dia TV. It is a news station catered to South Asians or Indian Americans. I'm not Indian American myself. It's my place of employment. And you can watch it on... Um, I don't know if you actually might be able to. We have stuff on our YouTube channel. You can look it up. It's Dia TV. That's D-I-Y-A TV. Um, it is an antenna TV news channel. So you would need an antenna TV, which you can get for cheap. You can get even like $5 ones. We are currently broadcasting in... Uh, what is it? We're broadcasting San Francisco, Bakersfield, Chicago, Dallas, and Orlando. So if you're not in one of those areas, unfortunately, you won't be able to watch the antenna version. But you can watch our web contents. It might be... A little bit on the dry side um, I don't personally watch too much of it myself because you know I work on it it's kind of I'd say that's that's uh, the thing for most people that create content they typically don't watch their own stuff most musicians that play the same singles on tour for tens of years are just like I 
I, I bet Axel Rose is so sick and tired of Welcome to the Jungle. It's more muscle memory for, for him than legitimate enjoyment. But uh, it, it's it's mostly news and politics that that uh, pertain to um, Indian Americans. There's some U.S. coverage there with like some president stuff. I don't want to get too political on here on leanings or anything. But um, yeah, if if you're if you're into news. Uh, particularly that of the Indian American community. Give it a listen. Um, shoot, what was I talking about before then? Shoot, I don't even remember. Let's see. And I can probably stream for another 20 minutes or so because I have to... I've, I've neglected to shower this morning. I need to eat some breakfast, and by breakfast I mean cereal. And by cereal, I mean Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Not the healthiest of uh, breakfasts, but it is efficient. Shoot. Um, actually from Canada, but Native American or Indian. <laughs> that that's uh that's cool. I I assume the Canada system is doing so much better with uh, the current coronavirus epidemic. I'm I'm sorry. No. I guess you could call it an epidemic. The official title is pandemic. Oh, one of these guys I think has a shot. Yep, shotgun, which is bad for me, but good for me if I can get it. Yeah, I, I assume Canada is doing infinitely better. You guys have universal health care, and that is an achievement that America has failed to implement. To me, it's always been... Uh, cause I, don't, I, I really don't want to get too political, but I think this is just such of like a human right issue. Like, let's say I, I'm not going to have... I actually won't have health insurance pretty soon because I'm reaching over a certain age, so I will no longer be under my father's health insurance policy, so I'm going to have to pay for my own. But let's say I, I currently don't have health insurance. If I'm just walking on the street and a car hits me and suddenly I have a $100,000 bill to cover my costs for whatever reason, that's just a number I'm tossing out there, I do not think it is morally right to say, hey, you did absolutely nothing wrong in this situation. You do, you weren't like playing with a gun and shot yourself in the foot. Um, did this happen to you because of outside forces? You had nothing to do with this. I do not think it is morally right to say, we will fix you, but now you owe us money. And therefore your life is basically ruined. Whether you choose to pay for it or not, it is, it, it's insane. I don't think it's right. And you're also Native American. That's cool. I personally am of... Shoot, let me get these guys out of the way. I am of Spanish and Italian descent. My mother's side of the family is... is uh, much stronger in the Italian blood, and my father's side is <coughs> much stronger on the Spanish side. I always had a bit of a tough time growing up because um, my name's Jose, so you know, very <laughs> stereotypical, very obvious um, Spanish name. Except I live in California, and the assumption is if you have anything bearing on Spanish, uh, it's inherently Mexican, and uh, my family did live in Mexico, not, when I say my family, not my immediate family, my grandparents, great-grandparents come from Mexico, so on some fronts you could say, like, yes, I am Mexican-American, but they immigrated from Spain, and so when people ask me what I am, I'm just like, I, I really don't, per personally, I'm just like, I'm, I'm Spanish, I'm Mexican, whatever you want to categorize me as, that's fine. 
<laughs> but it's hard for me for uh, it's hard for me in particular because I have very I, I hate this word I, I, I think it's weird to call it that fair fair skinned um, I, I, I'm, I am a bit on the paler side so people see my name like Jose and pale skinned it's like what are you even Mexican? I'm just like I don't know, dude. I got I got all that Spanish blood in me. What what the fuck do you want me to fucking tell you? I I look the way I am. So nine times out of ten, people don't believe me when I say that's my name. And on one hand, it, I, you can dismiss it pretty easily. It's just like people legitimately curious, and it's, and it's honestly not that big of a deal. But when you hear it time in and time out, it's so annoying over time. Especially when I was working retail at a uh, grocery store, it's like every single customer was asking him, just like, oh god, can I please stop answering the same question? Shoot. Damn it. Uh, yours is George, not very typical. I, you know what? George is a good name. There is absolutely nothing wrong with George in any, in any regard. See, where the fuck did I get that rocket launcher? Then again, I should be focusing on dipping. Um, my father actually has the exact same name as me, uh, middle name included, except that he is the junior of his father, and I am the junior of my father, which makes me the um, which makes me the third. So I have a little suffix thing going on. And uh, that makes things infinitely more complicated when you're living with uh, when you're living with your namesake. I was working at Walmart for one summer out of high school, and I would recommend do not work at Walmart. Um, I lost my last paycheck after I quit because my father saw a piece of mail with his name on it, saying, "Oh, um." I, I don't get anything from Walmart. I don't need this. I'm going to toss it straight in the garbage. Not because it didn't occur to him. Hey, your son worked at Walmart. Your son has the same name. That might be his last paycheck. So I got sent on a, uh, a freaking search. Chase my paycheck. I had to go back to the Walmart I used to work at to my manager that I absolutely detested and explain to them, yeah, my paycheck got lost. So they had to reissue a new one. Uh, my dad threw that one out too, even though I explained the situation to him. And um, then, so it got lost in the mail too. So I had to go to the mail office. I had to go back to Walmart. It was a whole big freaking mess, and that all started because I have the same freaking name as my dad. So when I eventually have kids, I am more likely than not specifically because of that story. I, I'm not going to name my kid the same thing. There will, there will not be a Jose the Fourth. Uh, you're the second. It was my great great grandpa's name. See that that I think that is really cool. I think that's a much better usage of it. Like, e even for uh, grandparents. And especially for great great grandpas. That, that's awesome. Uh, very. Uh, and there's nothing even wrong with naming, like, a junior after you. Like, that can be very endearing. <laughs> Just for my particular instance of losing my paycheck. Was, uh. Was a tale I would personally not like to. Not, not to, uh, relive. And don't tell my uh, girlfriend this, but I'm not a big fan of the names that she's picked out for kids. <laughs> she's like, oh no, name it after you. I'm like, no, not doing that. Shit. This part's freaking hard. I always recommend people play Halo on Heroic because that's the official difficulty that uh, Bungie kind of endorses as the baseline Halo experience. But I can see why people who do Let's Plays and streams would prefer playing on normal. 
It's a bit of a smoother uh, streamlining experience. Shit, fine. I need another gun. Shit, 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 shit. Not doing well. I always forget how well these actually do. Shit, shit, shit. You know what? I am really dumb. I forgot. Arbor can go invisible. <laughs> That'd be very useful for dodging all of this. Should have been using that starting a long time ago. Let's see, where do I... There you go. One critique I do have for this level in particular is that... You know, it's a, it's a product of its time. The level looks very samey. Because, you know, limited by the time and the technology. Slash, it's kind of the point. Because there's a Forerunner facility and they're all about just ev making everything look uniform. But from a gameplay perspective, it's definitely like, yeah, it, it, it's basically, I'm running to the end of that same part. I'm looking for the thing to drop down. Not the strongest example of level design. Nice little ladder. Not ladder. Freaking this thing is shoots and ladders. Alright, this is going to be useful. Let's see if I can just get this. Shit. Run. Don't even bother with these guys. But uh, I'm going to be wrapping the stream up basically right about now because I have to shower and eat and get ready for my day of work as much as I don't want to. But you know what? I've really enjoyed streaming today. I've enjoyed ye having you in here, George. I would love to have you be a recurring viewer, and I'd love to continue chatting with you. Um, so obviously you've already followed. That's, that's amazing. That's awesome. I have a YouTube channel that I have linked in my little, not in my social uh, bar down there. I've I've been kind of changing up what I've been doing. It's mostly video essay stuff, critiquing game design. Uh, I have a review of uh, Tomb Raider. I have some game industry critique on microtransactions and why they may not actually be a, a big deal. That whether you agree with it or not, I think is a... That, so whether you agree with it or not, I think it's an interesting perspective. I think I... Uh, oh, that dude got freaking murked. That's an interesting perspective. But, um... Yeah, I, I would say check out my YouTube channel, you might enjoy it. I'm working on a review right now, actually. I finished the script, finished recording the video. I just got to stitch together the actual video part of it from the B-roll that I have. But it's a review on uh, Plague Tale. So if you haven't played that, it might still be on Game Pass, but I will have a review on that. Hopefully Saturday night, Sunday night, somewhere around there. It's not like I have much to do with the frickin' uh, pandemic. And I also have a Twitter. I need to be a little bit better about using, but feel free to follow me on those. That would be super cool. Let's see if I can kill these guys. Um, oh, awesome! Thank you, man. That is, that's amazing. You, you're, you're my freaking hero of the day, George. All right, so I'm gonna call this a stream for the day, or not day for the morning or afternoon, whatever you want to consider this. Um, thanks for watching, man. And I should be back streaming at about 10 p.m. or so doing Doom Eternal. Have a good morning, man.